In this episode, Scott and I will be talking about managing your time. Yeah. This is the Stretch Goals Podcast, where each week we'll share insights and lessons learned based on our experiences as entrepreneurs. We'll challenge you to create ambitious goals as you start and grow your business. I'm your host, Robert Dickerson. And I'm Scott Davis. So Scott, I think this is a a very timely episode this week. And something that you had brought up is managing your time. And we all, we all know that time is our most precious resource. We only get a certain amount of time. But we also all have the same amount of time each day to get something done. And so the purpose of this episode is going to be about how can you maximize your time? And really, how do you decide what to allocate yourself to in terms of time and also to your team as you're growing your business? All right. So I think one of the hardest parts about transitioning into entrepreneurship especially if you're coming from the corporate world, is deciding how to allocate your time. Because when you're in a corporate job, you have a boss that's telling you what you need to be doing, what the milestones are, what the deadlines are. But when you become an entrepreneur and you're running your own business, you get all this freedom. And it's it's great. It's one of the best parts about being an entrepreneur is that you get to decide. Mm -hmm. But it also comes with the greatest responsibility that you're not playing video games, that you're focused on (laughs) growing your business. And so I think that's maybe a good part to start is about how you decide what to allocate your time to right. when you're growing your business. You just got back from a conference. Right. And that's something right. I've been thinking a lot about too is there's a lot of great conferences out there and I, I love to network and meet people, but you know, how do you decide whether a conference is worth it? So maybe talk a little bit about that, about, about you know, the conference and how that affected, how it affected your business. Well, you know, for this conference, this was a support conference. Uh, I was supporting, you know, one of my customers for an app that I did. So it wasn't like a, a sales thing for me. But yeah, you know, sometimes let me just touch on that really quick. Sometimes, you know, when when I had success in the past with with my business, I sold. I went to a conference just to see if it would work, and I ended up picking up, you know, twenty five, thirty customers from it. So the justification was there. But I think once you are in a more competitive market. Or you have an established customer base; those things sort of have you know a limit on on their, their value. So, but for me, there's that challenge of okay, I've got to go support this, but my other priorities have to keep moving forward. You know, my team has to be focused. In some cases, I have to be focused. You know, I was going back to my room after a 16 hour day and working on code when I got back. So, I mean, they were long days for me. But you know, that's that's the trade off when you're the boss, right? So. Yeah, you, you've got all these different considerations to make. You know, do you go meet with this potential customer because that's an offset of time, right? If you've got a two-hour lunch with somebody that you're hoping to bring on business, you, you're taking that two hours away from someone who's already paying you. At least, you know, that's how it works as a freelancer or a consultant. So they're, you're constantly weighing these and balancing these trade-offs. But it's particularly difficult when you're just starting out uh, with that. So. I don't know what, what did you do when you first started? Like, how did you manage that that shift? You know, to to get into that mindset. Well, at first, I mean, it was a little bit hard for me to to make that transition, and then I started thinking about, well, what did I do in my corporate role? How did I? Because I managed people, mm-hmm. and I helped allocate other people's time, and so I started applying those techniques of, for me, what works is putting together milestones, putting together a schedule of what I need to get done each day and thinking about each day, well, I need to get this, these three items done and really focusing on that. And I also use a calendar really heavily where I'll schedule out meetings. I try to allocate and mix and match sales meetings within my development time. And so that way I'm not, you know, if I set a certain number of meeting sales meetings for week per week, then I know I'm meeting my sales, my sales goals that I've set for myself, but I'm also getting things done within those other blocks of time. Because I hate I hate going to a meeting and meeting someone and spending a bunch of time and then finding out it's kind of a dead end, right? So mm-hmm. I tr- it's hard to avoid some of those things, though, in the sales process. Development, I feel like, is a lot more regimented where I can spend time and I can really knock out things. Right, but you can't always, you know, from a software perspective, you can't always guarantee that, that you're going to get done your task in a certain amount of time. Like, that's why, for me, uh, Pomodoro timers, you know, if you're familiar with it, you've got... 25 minutes that you dedicate to a task and you take a five minute break, 25 minutes, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily work well on software, but for other tasks it might. Uh, but I mean, 
Well, I think How in the you... software too, one of the things I've liked about being an entrepreneur is not having to spend my whole day div- banging my head against the wall on a problem. If mm-hmm. I run up to a, into a problem, I can take some take a step back and take some time to really think about it. Whereas if you're in a nine to five job, you might waste the whole rest of the afternoon, come back the next morning and fix the problem right in five minutes. And that's right. not really a yeah. great use of your time. Yeah. I think when you're starting out, though, sometimes you hit roadblocks and sure. you do spend you know, most of your day trying to, to resolve a problem. Like if you've got a new product and you've got server issues, you know, like you've got to stop what you're doing and address it. But yeah, every industry, every job, every product, the, the needs of a job are, are always, always different. And like you said, like the, the playing field is even. We've all got 24 hours in a day. We can't change that. We can change how much we sleep, which obviously has you know, <laughs> negative negative effects uh, on performance and cognitive abilities. But you know, there's there's people out here who are taking supplements and and doing things like Soylent, so they don't have to get up and go get food. Like they're just drinking their 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 meals. And there's other people who are polyphasic sleepers who sleep two and a half hours a day and they work and play the rest of the day. They've got more hours than all of the rest of us. But all of these things that you do to get more time, they all have negative offsets. And the question becomes like, what works best for you in your business? Probably something normal, <laughs> you know, like you know, time hacking and growth hacking uh, your own body only makes but so much sense. But if, if you get down to it, what does that mean? That means if you need that extra time, you're probably not managing your time efficiently. I guess that's just the point of this conversation. One thing that helped me when I started out was to allocate longer periods of time to a specific task. So Mm. for a specific customer, for a specific project, I would devote the whole day or maybe even if I had to a half a day, right? So I wouldn't try to do a half hour work, switch to another task, so really reducing that context switching between the different tasks I was trying to do. So I could really sit down and focus on something for a couple hours and really think about it. I found that really helped me get in a zone on a project and really focus in on it. Yeah, if you try to do it, you know, like do a task for one one company, do a task for another company or a customer, it's just not efficient. Like you said, like dedicating larger batches of time. You know, sometimes I'll even do a full day for one customer and then another day for another customer. That but that doesn't always work either. And I think, you know, if you're if you're building a physical product, your your needs are different. Like you've got one customer and that's building the product, right? You know, if you're you're you just invented a new pair of you know sunglasses or wearable sunglasses or something. You've got supply chain management, all these different things you have to worry about. So your needs are different no matter what industry, but it all comes down to how do you best craft that time to yourself? And you just have to try different things. You know, like like you said, like maybe maybe one task for for someone now and then switching gears to another task, maybe that works for you. If so, go with it. For me, Half a day or a full day dedicated to specific customers is easier for me. Uh, you know, I might get ten things done for them in that time, but um, that may not work for you. Like maybe you get bored. <laughs> so it's really you just have to identify what works for you. Just try it out. You know, try it a couple days on this scenario. Try a couple days on that, and see what really works best, and get in that groove and and just go at it. Yeah, I don't think there's a one size fit all fits all solution. <laughs> right, you really do have to try things and. And see what works because it, it all depends also on your phase, you know, your phase in life, whether you have kids, you know, mm-hmm. that that really affected me. Now that I have two kids, the time that I could work, right. you know, I can't do as all nighters anymore. Right. Um, and so I really had to adjust my schedule and, and how I'd focused on different things based on, you know, where you are in life and your other priorities. Sure. So why don't you talk about your day a little bit, how you you know, how do you prioritize things, especially when stuff comes up in the middle of the day, tasks that come up, maybe an urgent task that pops up in the middle of the day from one customer, or as you're yeah. managing a team, they have questions for you. You know, how do you keep your team moving forward, yourself moving forward um, as you go through the week? Well, you know this in, in software, things come up that are high priority, you know. Always. That, It's a fire, you know, so you always kind of have to expect that. (laughs) Even if you write great code, there's things that happen, which becomes your highest priority, right? You know, I I, I sort of always have this general idea of how long things are going to take. And if I know something's going to take like three days, 
I set the expectation that's five days uh, just because that gives me the buffer I need for just various things. But always add that little fudge factor on top of, of setting your expectations. That being said, you could still run into an issue that takes you much longer. Like uh, maybe there's a server outage or maybe an employee quits. You know, like there's there's things that happen that, that make you miss those goals. And that's always tough. But for me, I start my day... Uh, I start my day, you know, when the kids wake up or a little bit before the kids wake up and I'll get them settled, grab a cup of tea and uh, basically go at it, you know, uh, until till lunchtime. And I'll spend lunch with my family. And then after that, I, I work straight through until dinner and play with the kids, you know, and, and maybe uh, eight, nine o'clock if I've got something that needs to be done that's really quick, I'll go do it. Otherwise, it's it's spend time with the wife and if I've got additional work to do or I've got something on my mind and know I'm not going to sleep, then, you know, when my wife goes to bed, I might come in and, you know, hack out a few lines of code or fix a problem. And then it's just me time, right? It's just like I'll code till one, three in the morning sometimes, you know, it's just whatever, whatever I need to do or whatever I'm in the groove or feeling, you know, so, um, but that's pretty much my routine. I, I prefer a constant routine. I don't like when things change. If I've got to have someone come over and work on the house, like that messes up my groove. Uh, doesn't work well for me when that gets messed up. I get stressed. Uh, but I know that. So I try to mitigate, you know, those those types of things. Like this podcast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the podcast is interrupting <laughs> well, actually, my flow. That's, a, that's what I was going to ask you too is, um, you know, how do you identify opportunities? Like I know when we first started talking about this podcast, we yeah. kind of went back and forth, you know, for a couple of weeks talking about it is, and it's a problem that I run to, into as well. Is how do you identify those opportunities that really that are worth you it? Should, yeah, they're worth it. Should you invest your time in this opportunity? Sure. Well, you know, for this, this is an easy one because this is something we were both interested in, and and so there's like that reward there. It's not the reward is is personally fulfilling. It's not necessarily monetary. It's not necessarily uh, company growth. Sometimes those things come organically because you've put yourself out there. So that's a that's a great benefit it, should it come. But for me, it was like this is something I've interested in. I've got someone who's on the same page. It's it's worth the time to go out and do it, and you know check that off my list. You know it's something I've wanted to do. So you know we did say when we were talking through this, it was like hey let's 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 time box this thing to about a half an hour, and that way you know our our daily schedule isn't changed too much. And obviously there's things that happen outside of it but you know that that that's a known that's a known thing okay it's going to take half an hour maybe 45 minutes i can block that out and then during the rest of the day i make it up in other ways you know yeah i, I mean, think where, that's important the same way to for kind you? of quantify you i mean and, and for me as well i really like a structured day and so right. when i can quantify things to a certain time period yeah. it's easier for me to fit those into my yeah. routine or the other thing shift things around right to to make it work I hate meetings that come up that that aren't known meetings. Like, hey, like this happened to me yesterday. Hey, Scott, can we hop on a phone call? I'm like, mm, no, no, we can't because <laughs> I didn't have that planned for. And in my own mindset, it's going to really mess with you know the rest of my day because I I sort of have it planned out. I sort of know uh, what I'm doing. And when you throw me a curveball like that, it's uh, not ideal. So. Um, but, but unfortunately, that's the nature of the game. And uh, but if I like to have my meetings ahead of time, so if you ask me for a meeting today, I'm going to tell you it needs to be tomorrow, just because I can plan that, right? But uh, that's just how I work. I think some people kind of go with the flow. But I hate meeting for meeting's sake because it's a waste of time. I would much rather do than than pontificate about ideas. You know, <laughs> uh, I'd rather get in the trenches and get things done. Yeah, I think you know, meeting times can be such a time waste and such a, yeah. well, and a lot of people it. that they feel like they're being productive by being in a meeting. Right. right. Yeah. There's, there's habitual meeting people or, you know, like you, you, everybody knows that guy who's like, let's have a meeting. And he gets in there and he just talks and then he, and then he, you know, talks about his weekend for 15 minutes and you're like, can we just get on topic here? We got work to do. But if you think about this in the corporate world, like think about a Fortune 1000 company. You've got a meeting with 10, 15 people in it. That's 10 or 15 salaries that you are paying for this meeting where they could be actually doing work. Sometimes the meeting is work and you're planning, but a lot of times you're just meeting for the sake of meetings. Like having a recurring meeting on your schedule that doesn't even need to be had, uh, you know, cancel it, you know, <laughs> do something different. Or don't just sit there and take up the whole block of time, end it when the meeting's over. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think that leads us into managing your team as well because, 
Mm-hmm. As you're as you become a leader, as you become a manager of employees, of contractors, you know, you have to keep these people going forward and moving forward all the time. So I found that it really is important to touch base with them. I we use Slack a lot at Map Out. Yeah. And I've found that's that's a great way to document processes, document um, action items and milestones. So people don't have to keep coming and asking me what, you know, what's next. They can just proactively do things. But but I also still have usually a weekly meeting with everyone. Most of the time it's this within small groups, though. It's either individually I'll meet with someone or within a small team that's working on a task. So it's not a whole company meeting. I found yeah. that's really productive because you can quickly hash out things that might be hard to do over email, over Slack. Um, talk you, about some ways that you found that, that work well with your team. Well, well, are you doing daily stand-ups and things like that, too, on top of it, like some some agile process or no? I used to do that in the corporate world, but I don't as much anymore because I've found that a lot of times there aren't things that come up every day. And so I do it more on a, a needs basis where we, we have to have something done, so I need to reach out and, and talk to this person. A lot of those day-to-day things I just do in Slack because I feel like – a daily meeting breaks up everyone's day, and they might be doing something productive, and then suddenly they're not because we want to have a 15-minute meeting about me telling you what's going on mm-hmm. with the company. Yeah, with me, and at least how I do my team, I like to have our meetings earlier in the day, get them over with, and then you have time to work on them. A meeting at the end of the day, you know, a lot of times you know how it is. Like People expect things to be done like right when you have the meeting or the thought. Like For me, it's like, Let's talk about this now so we can get on with the rest of our day, uh, which may be impacted by this decision. So afternoon meetings I hate, um, you know, internally, right? Obviously with customers it's different. So, But, yeah, I have daily stand-ups um, for some projects that are more detailed just because sometimes you need to communicate it. But we're really pushing all that to Slack now. I just wrote a little Slack bot that messages everybody at the same time every day. What'd you do yesterday? What'd you do today? Are you blocked? And you just answer it and it goes into a channel. And you know what I mean? Like, why waste the actual 15 minutes when you can just do that? Everyone gets it. You're expected to read it. If you don't, well, yeah, you know, you missed something. So it's on everybody to to do that. But it but it removes that meeting uh, that you wouldn't you know, that wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise have that time. So well, I think um, that communication is still important between your oh, yeah, team. Yeah. And and I think you just need to find ways that work best for you, whether that's a daily meeting, whether that's through Slack, whether that's right. a weekly meeting, whether that's putting mm-hmm. together a status report every week. You know, I've kind of done all those things at different phases. And it really depends on the project and it depends on the team as well as to how much right. handholding they need or can I document some of this stuff? Sure. And then they can just kind of go through it, right? So it's well documented enough that they can just they can execute on it. They don't need to ask me a bunch of questions. And I really try to remove myself. Like, yeah, I hate being the blocker. I do not want to be the blocker. <laughs> yeah. So and it I takes want to practice give, to not be the blocker, especially if you're a doer, like you know, both of us are. Yeah. So get out a lot of, of times, I want to take something. I say, I can't yeah. do that. Right. I have to remove myself and let you run with it. And so I think that's really, as a leader, as a manager, that's really a mantra that I've um, really taken to is. Remove roadblocks from other people and then get yourself out of the way and just mm-hmm. let people execute. And right. don't micromanage them. Give them the context they need to execute and don't control them, right? Give them, give them what they need to know to execute and then let them come back to you uh, for feedback as they go along. Right. No, that's all great points. You know, but, but what about this? All, all this sounds great in a frictionless world, okay? But in the real world, we got lots of projects we're working on, many customers. Uh, these unexpected things come up. You know, let's say you thought you were going to have X amount of hours today, but then that customer calls you, "Hey, I need I need some changes," or "Hey, there's there's a bug that we need fixed." Like right now, now your time, which you thought you had planned out, is not planned out. So you you're constantly on this this thin line of being overcommitted. And undercommitted or committed just right, and it and it changes every single day. But then at the same time, to grow your business, you need to commit to more so you can bring in more. And then you find yourself just completely buried in work. Yep. And I see it a lot in startups. I see it a lot everywhere. And I've been a part of it myself. And 
that's the hardest thing in terms of managing your time. How do you how do you do that? And I constantly ask myself that question. In fact, my biggest stress is, yeah, you know, sometimes when your customers aren't paying you, you've got that stress. But the biggest stress for me is how am I going to get all these things done that I need to get done in the time that I have? Yes, that's the biggest stress for me as well. And I think I overcommit myself a lot of times because I want to hedge my bets that you yes. know I have enough work coming in that if one yeah. customer falls down a little bit, but it always that. seems to be that everyone wants something at the same time, and yep. so you start getting stretched thin. Yeah, and so I, that's why I try to create a team that's scalable, that I can bring on more people as I as I get more work, and that it's not. I've really been focusing on that things aren't tied to me personally doing the work; that it's my company doing the work. It's you know someone else that I can bring on to do the work and putting the processes in place that then they can execute. Um, and that way I can scale better than just me losing sleep, right, to get something done. Right. You know, that actually sounds like an idea for a future podcast, which is how, how do you disconnect yourself and learn to sort of offload this stuff onto your team and trust them? Because that's a, that's a hard thing to do. It is hard. Um, yeah. I mean, overcommitting, I mean, I see it all the time. And uh, it, it, it ultimately affects the quality of your work. It affects the relationships with your customers, um, with your team. You could end up in a scenario where you're asking your guys to work overtime because things aren't done. And ultimately, it comes down to you just have to plan. You just have to try things that work, find the things that, that when they're oiled up just right, you know, don't squeak at all. Like that's what you want. And, but you, but you have to be willing to try things. And, and the one thing is, is if you're in a situation and things aren't working, you know, you've got to make a change. If you sit there and do nothing, then, then guess what? It's never going to get any better. So, I recommend you just constantly make tweaks, find what works, be adaptable, and you'll get there. I think everyone thinks that their problem is the most important as well. So I think you have to push back against the customers as well to figure out what really is a priority versus what can wait a couple days to get done. Because if you just take everything as top priority, it's going to be really hard because every every day you're just going to get new things coming in. And so it's okay, I think, sometimes to push back against customers and it's important to find the right customers that are willing, you know, to be flexible, a little bit flexible with that. Type yeah, of stuff. absolutely. And you know, I used there was a point in my career where I used to do uh, free maintenance to an extent every month, just as a you know a gesture of kindness, like, hey, if you got a, a quick fix, I'll take care of it for you. But man, that stuff adds up, and they'll take advantage of you. And then next thing you know, you're doing things that aren't paying the bills. So I got smarter with my maintenance pricing or my my ongoing pricing or retainers or things like that because that stuff really eats away at you over time. And even though it's a gesture of good faith and, and you can still do it every now and then, don't do it on a regular basis because it just does not work. Another thing that I do is I treat all my time as a billable right. hour. So do I. <laughs> so if you think about your day or you know whatever time that is and you have an opportunity to come up, whatever it is, I evaluate it against, is that worth me spending two sure. hours on? Or could I better spend my time somewhere else to get a better ROI? And I know that might be bad. You know, some things you can't do that with your family yeah. and things like that. But for things related to your business, I really try to take that approach where, you know, what is the ROI I'm going to get out of this? Um, is it worth mm-hmm. my time? I do that um, on absolutely everything. Taking my car to get an oil change. My lawn care service. Uh, my, I have cleaners and a lawn care service for two reasons. It takes me more than two hours to cut my, my lawn. They're going, to, they're going to do it in 30 minutes or less, and it costs me less to pay them than it would cost me an hourly rate being thrown out the window because that two hours yep. is now gone. So I gladly pay for it. Does that make me a snob? Probably, but <laughs> I gladly pay for it because I need those hours to make money. I pay for a cleaning service for the same reason. I don't have time to sit and clean my house every week. You know, it just it doesn't make sense. So it's it's... I weigh everything against that. You know, I'll pay a little bit extra on a flight if it gets me there an hour quicker. Why? Because right. that's an hour that I can be billing somebody. So right. your time, that's your time is worth more. Right. And I think, um, you know, as I've gotten older, that has become way more apparent to me. Right. Um, things I grew up as, you know, wanting to do everything myself. Right. My parents kind of taught me, you know, be self sufficient. You know, do doing things yourself, and that's a great habit to have. But as you start growing your business, you start realizing that your time is more valuable 
mm-hmm. should I go be cleaning this toilet or should I be spending time, you know, growing my business? I mean, that's really <laughs> what the, what it comes down to. <laughs> so instead of cleaning the toilet, you're you're growing a bacterial colony <laughs> in your toilet. Yeah, my toilet's red right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my wife that. (laughs) (laughs) So in this episode, we talked about managing your time, some strategies that we used, and to really focus on that time is your most precious resource and how do you maximize it to grow your business and to grow your team and to help your team use their time wisely as well. So I think it boils down to is trying to find things, strategies that work for you Um, Hopefully, you can take some things away from the stuff that we've talked about and apply it to yourself. Um, But I think it's really important, like you said, Scott, to just try different things, see what works, and don't overcommit yourself, right? (laughs) Right. And, you know, just be adaptable. If you start feeling that stress for time uh, creeping in, maybe you need to expand your team a little bit. Maybe you need to readjust your own priorities. Maybe you need to drop some unnecessary meetings. Or maybe you need to set your your expectations with your customers a little bit differently. But all of those things, plus plus many many more, you know, you, you, they're all pieces of a puzzle. Rearrange them, get them fit in just right, and and then go with what works best for you. So thanks for dedicating a half hour to listen to us. Hope it was yeah. productive for you. Come back next <laughs> week, right? That's right. You won't waste another thirty minutes together. <laughs> See ya. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Stretch Goals Podcast. You can access the show notes for this episode and listen to other episodes by heading over to stretchgoals.fm. 